Welcome to the Persuasion Pitch Podcast. I'm your host, Jess, licensed esthetician, makeup artist, and anti-MLM advocate. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Persuasion Pitch. Today, I'm so excited to have Russ on with me. This is the very, very first time I have ever spoken to a male ex bot <laughs> but um so he was in an MLM and he's going to tell us all about his experience and why he joined and I read his email to me and I was like wow like this is this is intense so Ross thank you so much for being with us today thank you for having me all right so you I mean let's let's just take it back to the beginning um like like what you told me so you were looking for was it um to, well, first of all just tell us about how you joined this particular multi-level marketing company and you can you know tell us what what it is and what they sell yeah uh so let me give you a little bit of background I was working as a civilian employee on Buckley Air Force Base in a warehouse that deals with mostly uniforms, BDUs, things of that nature. I was there for four years and I found myself being very unhappy. We were scheduled to be there at five o'clock in the morning and we didn't get out until maybe 1 2 o'clock in the afternoon after things were done. And let me tell you, those are exhausting hours. You get up, it's between 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. You, you get ready and then you just go into work. So you're there when it's pitch dark outside and then you leave when it's you know early afternoon and you're exhausted. So I've been doing that for about four years. And during this time, a lot of people I knew on base were serving in Iraq. And at that time, things were not going well. So there was a lot of anger in that environment and that anger was pretty intense um you also had a bureaucracy that just liked to make things harder than they really were they didn't really react well to simple solutions because they'd always give you reasons why it couldn't be done and i got sick of that so i was looking for something else i needed something that i can be in a little more long term that would give me more fulfillment and something that I would find more enjoyable. So I'm at Sunday morning services. I meet a guy that um, I previously encountered at an event and we kind of, you know, talk and a little bit and um, I pull out my cell phone because I get a text and he asks, how much are you paying the month for, serv for service on that cell phone? And I said about 45 bucks for uh, unlimited services. Now, at that time, it was pretty expensive because this was in 2006, and I was 24 years of age at that time. So, you know, of course, you know, I was paying a lot of money for that. So he says, how would you like to knock that down to 20? <laughs> I laugh and I said, well, I would. He says, okay. I got a clubhouse over in my apartment complex there's something i want to show you there if you're willing we can just schedule a meetup date i can you know show you what i do and how i can get how i can knock that bill down so i said sure so uh, later on that week i go to his apartment clubhouse and he introduces me to this mlm service called acn which stands for American Communications Network. They are a phone service company that is basically non-advertised. It doesn't, you know, deal with uh, the the big phone companies. So they, uh, because of that, they say they're cheaper and more affordable, and it also gives people that uh, that want to represent the company a chance to achieve financial independence. So what he does is he puts in a couple of the propaganda videos and some high ranking people, they're called regional vice presidents. They tell their sob stories and they talk about 
how they were down on their luck, they're broke, they, they're just looking for a better way to uh, not only make ends meet, but to make things better for their children because they want to give them a better life than the ones that they had. So they're, they're looking for another opportunity. And then lo and behold, ACN came in and just changed their lives. It's story after story. And it's, it's pretty much you get these soap opera hallmark looking couples, the ones with like the very square line jaws and the uh, gorgeous uh, model type women. Those are the ones that are speaking in these uh, interviews. And it's all the same thing. So I thought to myself, wow, if they could do it, then I could do it too. That's how they get you, okay? Right. <laughs> so I'm watching these videos and I'm, my eyes just light up and I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. So the second part, he, he puts another video and it talks about the type of service they have. Now they, they only had landlines at that time. They didn't have cell phones, which kind of put me in a, a bad spot because I only had a cell phone. I didn't have a landline. I had no use for one. I watched these videos and they talk about uh, landline services. They also have this ser service called VoIP, which stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It was a mid 2000s version of Skype or Zoom. Uh, keep in mind, Skype was like fairly, fairly new back then. So uh, they claim to be you know, better and you know, more advanced technology, things of that nature. And I, I, was, I was impressed. So after I watched the video, he says, well, what do you think? I said, I'm definitely interested. Now, so what he does is he calls his upline, who happens to be his ex-girlfriend. She's in Utah, and she's excited. Of course oh. she is in Utah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Imagine that. Right. So she's, she's in Utah, you know, very good-looking woman, very outgoing personality. And she asked me, you know, she asked me a few questions, and then kind of tells me about the, the system and how it works. So she says that in order to become a representative, you have to pay $499 to get in. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Whoa, that is quite expensive. It is. I, I, so I can't really afford that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are there other ways like well what's going on here it's like no they they require that because they want a solid commitment from you right. and five hundred dollars is going to make sure that you get your money's worth so you sign up as a representative you're in the rank of team trainer the very bottom rank and what you have to do is sign yourself up for the service and then you have to sign up three people underneath you uh, in order to bump up to what's called executive team trainer. Now, when you bump up to that rank, they'll pay you seven hundred fifty dollars. Now, the ranks as far uh, the ranks go: uh, team trainer, executive team trainer, executive team leader. At the time, it was team coordinator, and then you have regional vice president and senior vice president. So, you have all of these ranks that require you to not only sign up a certain number of customers underneath you, but you have to uh, also have a number of representatives. Now, you don't get, you don't get paid a lot when you, if you just have customers. You actually have to recruit people to uh, be representatives underneath you. Red flag. It is a huge red flag, okay? But at the time, I didn't see that. I was naive. So I'm I'm kind of in a dilemma here. I, I really want to do this, but I cannot afford to pay $499. Well, later on, I find that my then future upline did a little digging. And he called me up and he informed me that ACM was partnered with a payday loan company called PEO Cash. That's now defunct, and ACN will deny that they pay that they have partnered with payday loan companies. But it 
he showed me this. I believed it. And it even said future ACN reps, if, you know, get $500 here to start your own business. That's another red flag. Okay. <laughs> because not only are you signing up to be loaned $500 from this loan shark, the amount of interest that they charge for you to pay it back makes it even worse, okay? So I'm a little hesitant at first, but then I, he, he manipulates me to get into it and he says, look, do, how, how bad do you really want to get off that military base? And I said, I want to get, I want to get off very bad. I don't, I, I, I can't work there anymore. I'm, 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 I'm exhausted. He says, all right, look, just sign up for the loan. We'll, you know, you'll, you'll pay it back. Don't worry about it. So I give in. I sign up for this payday loan. I get loaned five hundred dollars, and I use that to sign up as a new representative of ACN. Now, he's excited. He calls his upline, who's thrilled. And she's like, yay, you're a new representative. We're so happy. She's like, you're going to have so much fun. And I got to tell you this. If you work really hard, you'll be successful. I know because I have felt it too. And we totally had your back. Now, one thing they say is that you will be in business for yourself, but never by yourself, which is a lie. Okay. Not only are you in this by yourself, but if you so much as tell your uplines that you're struggling it's your fault because you're not doing the you're not working the system the way they tell you to of course so always your fault. it's always your fault always, exactly always wow. so uh what my what my new upline does is he finds a, a, another group of acn representatives in Thornton, which is about maybe half an hour away from me. And he gets in touch with them and they invite me to what they call a PBR. Now, everybody, when you say PBR, everybody assumes you're going to be having alcoholic beverages of that particular drink. No, a PBR is called a private business reception. So, I get invited over there. I meet all these people. And I, I kind of see that they're all well-dressed, which kind of makes me look a little out of place because you know, I'm, I'm just like wearing a polo shirt and jeans and everybody's wearing you know, suits and it's, I'm a little uncomfortable, but I say, you know what, I'm here. I might as well just listen to what they have to say. So we have this, uh, they have this team coordinator there who, I'm going to call her G.I. Jane, uh, simply because she was very <laughs> militant in how she did things. Uh, yeah, she's, she was a girl from California, uh, ran a couple of food businesses, moved out to Colorado after becoming an ACN representative, and built a team out here. And she's very persuasive, but when it comes to actually motivating your team members, it's, it's all militant. You, you would think that you were in boot camp, the way she did things, okay? <laughs> so um, she in, uh, puts me on the spot, has me come up in front of everybody, um, introduces me as a new representative, uh, asks me to talk about myself, uh, what made me want to join. And I pretty much gave the, the same exact story that I told you. And once I said I was looking for a way out, she puts her arm around me and says, you have made the right decision. From here on out, your life is going to change for the better. I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the kiss of death. Yeah, that's like cult vibes right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but right then and there, I felt it, I was love bombed and it felt great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So... We had to talk about the uh, the system and how it worked. So, what what we were asked to do was create what was called a warm market list, which is, which was a list of 
everybody we knew, uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, uh, distant relatives, in-laws, you name it. We had to write every name, or every, every name down, every phone number down, and then we practiced the pitch. The pitch was we had to ask them if they can do us a huge favor. And then we were to say, you know, I'm starting up a new business, um, a little strapped for cash at the moment. Uh, just want to, just trying to get this thing off the ground. Would you mind helping my business and give it a try? Now, if that's not manipulation, I don't know what is. Right. So, um, so I've got, I've got uh, my warm market list down and I'm really excited to go, to go, uh, uh, introduce the HCN opportunity to my friends and neighbors. Well, later on during the week, um, I meet up with my upline. We get together and it's time for me to promote the ACN opportunity. So I call one of my best friends and I did it exactly the way they told me to. They even had scripts that we could read off of to kind of help us to be, you know, get a little more confidence in ourselves. Um, and, but they want us to make the uh, they want us to make the words our own. That way, we're not sounding like we're reading a, a, a commercial. So um, I did that, and my best friend, he's a little more, he has a little more common sense than I do. He was he knew exactly what was going on, and he said. Russ, what are you doing? This is a pyramid scheme. I want no part of it. And if you want us to remain friends, you will never peddle this snake oil to me ever again. Do you understand? Good friend. And <laughs> what did you say? I was crushed. <laughs> but you listened to him, right? Or... I was I was crushed. I, I said, "What do you mean?" I I'm just trying to, not good. You were crushed, of, but I'm glad you listened to him. <laughs> yeah, I was crushed. I said, "I'm just trying to start a business." As you're not starting a business, he's like, "You're not starting a business, okay? You are you are involved in a pyramid scheme. You're not going to make any money. In fact, you're going to lose money. And everyone that that is uh, love bombing you right now is going to turn their back on you." The moment you quit, oh, at the time, like, I'm not, I'm not going to quit. I'm in this for good, man. He knew what was up. He did. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I felt, I felt really bad. Yeah. And I was, I, I kind of felt like, you know, maybe I just made a mistake. Well, my upline he sees what's going on, calls his upline, just tells her what happened. And the first thing she says was like, you know what, it's okay if you receive rejection because this will help you grow. Oh yeah. My gosh. Growing into a very insecure person. Now right. what she meant was, it's, you know, these rejection experiences are going to help you uh, uh, grow into a more successful <sighs> business person. Oh my gosh. Now, you know, yeah, uh, and they, you know, you know, the, it, and then she even was telling me that the whole no, 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 just means not right now. Now yep. today, you tell That's me that, I get triggered. If you tell, if you were to tell me that no means not right now, I'm going to get triggered because you tell that to rape victims. Let's see where that gets you. Okay. So, I, I'm like, all right, I'll give it one more shot. She says, oh, then she says, okay, look, um, you obviously got into this with not a lot of training. So here's what, here's what I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, there's actually going to be a, a little uh, seminar here up in Utah where uh, an RVP, regional vice president, is going to be uh, giving a presentation to uh, ACN members, not only to how to grow their team, their businesses, but also how to make more money. She's like, you know, you're more than welcome to come up here mm -hmm. to Utah. Um, I'm going to be there. I'd be happy to meet you. I'll even sit next to you and, and just uh, so that way, you know, you'll feel a little more at home. I said, okay. 
but I'm thinking at the time, how, how am I going to get to Utah? Right, <laughs> right. That's what I was going to ask you. Who, who, on, who's, on whose dime are you going to Utah? Yeah. yeah. How am I going to, how am I going to get to Utah? I'm broke. I just, I just got loaned $500 that I have to pay back and that's extremely expensive. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh, so I asked my upline, I said, how am I going to get up there? Are you, are you going to drive me up there? What are we going to do? He says, well, let me call, let me go ahead and call the uh, representative from uh, Thornton and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can do. So he gives her a call and he asks if she's going and she says, well, yeah, I'm actually taking my team up there. Uh, if you want your new representative to come, just just have us meet, meet, have them meet me over at the intersection of uh, 88th and Washington, and we'll pick them up, we'll take them to Utah, and they'll bring them right back. Now, that's what my upline told me, and I said, okay, well, let, let, let's go. And he says, well, here's the thing. I cannot go with you. So what I'll do is I'll drop you off. You'll meet them there. They'll take you to Utah. They'll bring you back. You're in good hands. I trust these people. You're going to be around some people that love and support you. And by the time you get back, you're going to be ready to grow your business. And we'll, we'll have you all set to go. Okay. I trusted him. I trusted him because I, I, I was so far in, I believed in it at that point. Well, that was a huge mistake. And it, that was going to be an experience that I remember to this day. So he drops me off at the intersection of 88th and Washington. There's a minivan sitting there and I get, I get in this minivan and the first thing I see is there's about seven or eight people in this minivan. You have the driver's seat, the front passenger seat, the, the uh, middle seat, that's been taken out. And then you have the very back seat in the back and there's about seven or eight people in. And so a number of them in the back are just sitting on the floor and the rest That's of them are so sitting. strange. The <laughs> it was an extremely uncomfortable trip. Yeah. So and how far are you? Like how, how far do you, like how long of a drive was that? It was an eight hour drive. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And here's where it gets weird so in order to head up there okay we're we're, we're getting up we're, we're getting up there the people i guess they've known each other for a while and so everybody just kind of uses each other as pillows in order to kind of get comfortable sleep on the way and uh you know get some rest well so i'm i'm basically being used as a pillow and I am uncomfortable because I don't know any of these. Things. You're like, I don't know you. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know any of these guys. And I'm, I'm trying to make the best of this awkward situation. That's what I was about to say. Super awkward. Super, super awkward. Yeah, exactly. What I try to do is I try to get to know these people by, you know, just, you know, ask them, get to know you type questions, like what they do for a living, how long they've been in ACN, everything, all, all of that. Well, TC, GI Jane, just shuts this entire conversation down and reminds us of why we are in this vehicle heading to Utah. We were to talk about only ACN, what we can do to build our ACN business and what we can do to not only get reps and customers, but how we can go up the ranks faster so that we can truly achieve our financial independence. That was a bit of a shock. I didn't expect her to snap at me like that. Right. So we're on this trip. We're going, we're heading up there. And at this point, not only am I uncomfortable due to the snuggling, weirdness. but weirdness. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't like being told what I have to talk about, how I can talk about it, what mm -hmm. tone of voice I have to talk about it in. Because I, at that point, I'm feeling like I'm in a bit of a little dictatorship right here. Yeah, that's like the behavior control. Like, they're going to tell you what to, like, how to even talk. Like, the cult mentality yeah. there. So, I, at this point, I wanted them to put me out of my misery. I wanted somebody to just give me a mercy killing, take a gun out, shoot me in the head, drop my body off on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's how miserable That's I was. That's how miserable you were. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I felt like I was being kidnapped. Wow. wow. And that I would never see my family or friends again. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's intense. <laughs> so you get well, there. Go ahead. We get to Utah and... By the time we get to Utah, it's the crack of dawn because we drove overnight. And so at this point, we're, we're feeling grimy. And we can't just walk into the hotel where this conference is being held at stinking. So I asked where we were going to shower. And G.I. Jane said, there's not time for a shower. And I saw we can't going in smelling like this. We stink. So you know what she did? She what? pulled out some. Wipes. What did she do? She pulled out wipes. And so we were to clean our, ourselves, our armpits, you know, wash our hair, um, you know, our, our, you know, pretty much the upper torso of, of of our bodies, just to kind of you know clean ourselves off, and so we would be at least look presentable. And then in addition, what we do is we change in the car. Now, do you have any idea how oh awkward God. that is? And miserable. And awkward, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's strange, yeah. Very strange. So everyone was doing this? Everyone was changing in the car? It was co-ed changing in the minivan. Hmm. Yeah, so awkward. If it cannot get any more awkward, but I guess it could. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> you do realize there's going to be people that are that are probably looking to see what we're doing. <laughs> you know, maybe right. we're like having a bit of an orgy or something. <laughs> right, and that like that goes up on the line. Like that is so unethical. Like if this were to be an employer that made you do this, like some type of like sexual harassment or something mm -hmm. like that's so unethical it is and at that point i felt violated yeah i would too i would be like oh gosh i don't even know <laughs> so after we're finished doing all that we go in the hotel toward the uh, little ballroom where they're having this conference and I meet my upline's ex-girlfriend and she's so happy she gives me a hug and she's I'm so glad you came and I'm like yeah yeah glad to be here <laughs> so we find a seat we we sit down we hear we hear these inspiring lectures of you can do it mm -hmm. um we hear again we hear the sob stories and, and how they overcame their adversities we hear the famous Jim Rohn phrase, working part-time at your job, full-time on your fortune. Um, and then we're, we're coat through the pitch, the can you do me a huge favor? And we're, you know, everything they can to brainwash us, indoctrinate us, to motivate us to grow our ACN business. So we go through that and then there's about a, there's a bit of a 10 minute intermission and this uh, RVP is there. He's one of the guys in the propaganda videos. I see him and I make the biggest mistake you can ever make. You know what I did? What did you do? I went to talk to him. <laughs> now you're not supposed to do that. Okay. If you're new and you're just starting, you are not to talk to the Did they tell people. you that? No. Or, no. Okay. 
That no. is such a cult. This is a cult. This is a full blown cult. It is. <laughs> so I, I go to talk to him. I introduce myself to him. I say, yeah, I came all the way from Colorado to, to, to see you. And you know, he gave a very good, inspiring speech. And he's like, um, hi. And I, I say hello. I introduce myself to him. And um, after I get through talking, he cuts me off and says, that's nice. Who's your upline? I had no idea what an upline was at that time. Yeah. I was confused. I never even heard of that word. Yeah. So I asked, I asked what an upline was. Now he looks at me like I'm a cockroach needed to be stepped on. And he oh says, gosh. ah, well, when you find out, tell me, all right? So rude. So rude I'm, and weird. I'm, I'm a bit shocked because he... He came across as this outgoing person. Of course, yeah. Best. Everyone was probably praising him like he's such a great guy. Exactly. Well, I'm confused as to why he would act that way. And I'll, at the same time, I'm pissed off. So we go through the second half of the conference. And this time, I'm in a bad mood. I'm not really listening to anything. I just want to get out of here. And my upline's ex-girlfriend um she sees me and says so what'd you like what'd you think and of course i tell her exactly what she wants to hear i said wow it was great yeah i'm really excited to be in ACS. <laughs> I want to grow my business and i just want to get i said i want to get going she's like that's great well when you come home you can get to grow your business now that you have the tools you need to be successful you know we're here we're here for you every step of the way and it's like yeah great well, I go, to, I go to the people that gave me a ride and they see that I'm not really in a good mood. And they ask, what's wrong with me? And I, I tell them, I said, look, I went up to him. He just, he looks at me like I'm a cockroach. He, he says, uh, he asked me what, who my upline was. I told him I didn't know. And he says, well, when do you find out? Tell me. I said, what, what did I do to, to piss him off like that? And TC GI Jane snaps at me and says, you weren't supposed to do that. And, and I say, well, what's wrong with it? And then she replies, only successful people can talk to him. Ridiculous. Like, who are you, who are you to tell me who I can and can't talk to? Like, that's crazy. And this is after your friend told you about this, um, this being a pyramid scheme. And so... Yeah. And then what happened? What did you say to her? I said, well, is, is there a rule that I, I can't talk to certain people? Because I don't remember reading that in, uh, in the manual and anything. So tell me, tell me, where's the rule? Show me where the rule is. She scoffs and says, listen here, there's a chain of command. You work on a military base. You should know that. Oh, my gosh. Well, I this isn't the military realize. though. That's the thing. Like this isn't the military. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm confused. I said, well, I I didn't know I was to uh, inform uh, call people like sir or ma'am right. or or salute people. I, I what what are you talking about? Chain of command. She's like, you do work on a military base. You work on a chain of command, right? And I said, yeah, as a civilian, we, we do, but that's different. I'm on a base and I'm dealing with federal property. Okay. So of course there's a chain of command. She's like, well, it's kind of like that here. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, whatever. Let's just go. I'm, I'm ready to get, I'm ready to go home. So we drive home and this time we're silent because we're exhausted at that point. We, we sit through this two hour uh, conference there and we're you know we went through a long ride up there we sat through a two-hour conference we're heading back we're we, there's not much we say to each other there's not much to say we're just we're tired we're pissed off and and keep in mind the way back it's it was almost like I was sitting on a powder keg if you so much as breathe somebody snaps at you that's how bad it was. That's freaking ridiculous, dude. That is insane. No. 
you're not even getting paid by these people an hourly wage. It's not like you're getting like, you know, $200,000 a year. So you're going to listen to everything they say. Like you paid them $500 that you didn't even have that you have to pay back. Uh huh. And you take the time out to go on this uncomfortable trip in this bus with all these weird people that you have no idea I have to change clothes in front of them don't even know them at, like at all and then they're gonna tell you like what you, no oh my gosh no that's oh no. <laughs> at, at this point I wanted nothing to do with ACN I wanted out I wanted to go back to my life and we we drive home we drive back they dropped me off at the exact same spot. It's, it's kind of pitch dark at that point. My upline meets, meets me there and he's in a good mood because he thinks, oh, I got some great information. I was ready to, do my, ready to start my business. And he makes the mistake of asking me how it was. Now he didn't realize it because he had no idea what happened. But the moment he asked me that question, I gave him dagger eyes. I was... <laughs> You I was so, so my, yeah. my, my anger was reaching its boiling point. Right. And I, I said, look, you threw me to the wolves. Okay. You may, you may think that you were surrounding me with great people. You threw me to the wolves. Mm -hmm. And then I told him the, uh, how I was treated, what happened. Um, the experience I had over at the conference center with that regional vice president, I wanted to absolutely nothing to do with ACN. I said, I want out. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Now he's, he's feeling a little regret at that point. He says, I had no idea this was going to happen. I'm so sorry. I understand why you want to get out. I'm surprised that he even said that, honestly. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm, well, it, it's, I guess when you're in a cult like that, there there are people you just blindly trust, not realizing that that uh, so, there are some there, there there are some people that that have great smiles and good and good personalities, but it, it, on the inside they're monsters. Well, I was in a vehicle with quite a few of them. Right. So he he says, okay, just why don't you just cool down for a couple of days and. You know, just think it over, and then we'll. No, I no, no. I'm not thinking it over. I'm done. I want nothing to do with this. There is no thinking it over. He says, "Look, look. Let me just give my upline a call. Tell her what happened." So he does, and a couple of days later, she calls me, and she tells me she knows what happened, and that she was very sorry. She says, "Look, there's going to be a convention in Baltimore." Oh my gosh. Yeah. A national convention in Baltimore. They don't want you telling anyone what happened and they don't want to lose you. Exactly. And, and keep in mind, I was his only downline. And so if he loses me, then oh, he's Oh yeah. He keep me on. <laughs> right. Uh, so anyway, my upline's ex-girlfriend calls me, tells me there's going to be a convention in Baltimore there's, uh, there's going to be a, a number of guest speakers there. And here's the sweetener that she threw in uh, uh, just to get me to stay in. She informed me that our now former president, Donald Trump, was going to be the keynote speaker. And oh that he was, he was going to be uh, asked, uh, doing a Q&A. Well, keep in mind, this is 10 years before he ran for president. Yeah. Okay, so this is when The Apprentice was popular, uh -huh. the, uh, which was I was a huge fan of because I, I love that. I love that show. I like people competing, all of that. It was, it was, it was, it was a cool show to watch at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. You said Donald Trump was going to be the keynote speaker. She says, yeah, he's going to be the keynote speaker. He's going to, uh, you know, give us a, give us a speech, and he's going to, add, you know, have a Q and A. Well, that's all I needed right there. I wanted <laughs> to see Donald Trump. Who, who wouldn't? So, okay. so, who was going to pay for you to to go to get here? 
oh, I had to pay for that. Of course, of course she did. But okay. here's here's what here's uh, the other sweetener that she threw in. She invited me to stay in the hotel room with her, her brother, and her mom. And huh. I felt a little uneasy about that. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I said, "You do realize that I was just, uh, I, I was just mistreated by people that I thought were good." And she's like, "Look, we're not." He's like, "No, we're not like that. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, treat you poorly. In fact, you know, we'll we'll shower you, we'll shower you with love. We'll we'll do everything we can to help you. So it's, like, it's gonna be a little different." I, and I said, "Well." Okay. It'd be a hell of a lot different. <laughs> Just a little different. Yeah. Um, time goes by and I get a call from a lower level regional vice president. She finds that I haven't really been successful, wants to know what she can do to help me. And I, I said, look, you know, everyone, everyone I try to get involved, they either just ask questions and they stonewall me or they're not interested. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm trying to do everything yeah, that you guys tell me to do and it's just not working. Well, she, she basically dismisses that as a bunch of lame excuses. And she's like, if you do not do what we, do what we tell you to do, you are not going to make a dime. Now, I hang up the phone no, she actually hangs up on me. Sorry. She hangs up on me after she says, you're not going to make a dime. And I'm pissed because I don't like being talked down to that way. So I call her back. She doesn't answer. So I get her voicemail and I shoot her out. I say, look, you do not talk to me that way. You don't know me. You don't, you may think that you're high level and that you're making a ton of money. Well, let me tell you something. You can't take it with you when you go. <laughs> okay. Right. So I don't know what you think you're doing, but don't ever speak to me that way again. Good. And, I'm glad you said that. Well, keep in mind, Jess, that there were a few profanities that oh. were mixed into this. Well, no, they deserve that. You should have. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I call my upline back. And I tell him, I tell him like, look, here's the thing. I'm going to go to Baltimore uh, because I already registered. I paid $150 just to register for the thing. And then I paid $200, uh, $220 for a nonstop flight to Baltimore. I said, so I'm going to go to the convention because I already registered. But after this, I'm done. Right. At this point, my upline is kind of tired of me. And he kind of, you know, sees me as dead weight. He says, what's the point if you're going, if you're just going to quit? He's like, no, you're, you're kind of starting to become dead weight to me right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the one that like loved you so much. It was like, so there for you. <laughs> yeah. Was there a way that you could have gotten a refund for that, for the, um, the $150, like the, convention thing in the flight or no they would have refunded the 150 dollars oh, but I'm surprised yeah but the the 500 dollars no i couldn't get that back oh oh uh so i fly into baltimore i meet my ex-girlfriend's brother at uh, right at baltimore washington international we get into a shuttle we uh stay over at the Hunt Valley Inn in Hunt Valley, Maryland, and we get on the light rail trying to head up to the, con uh, the convention center in Baltimore. On the train, there is a fair inspector that is a little militant. So he shouts, fair inspection! <laughs> well, we pull out our tickets uh you know waiting for him to kind of see it and he was the kind of individual that was looking to bust somebody so when we follow the rules by showing him our tickets he snorts at us because he can't bust us like he wants to so that 
started off the morning on an interesting foot. Uh -huh. Well, now, once we get to the convention center, uh, there's like thousands of people here. And I'm a bit overwhelmed. Uh, there's, there's this environment where everything is just so exciting. It's a huge party. And they're playing party music. Everybody's cheering. They're hooting and hollering. They're, they're excited because they're going to be millionaires by promoting the ACN opportunity. And they have these regional vice presidents, senior vice president. They're, they're on the stage. They're pumping people up. And they're getting everyone excited. And everyone's like, yeah. Well, we go through all of these motivational speeches, we break for lunch. Now they, they have food there that they, they can serve you, but it's at a convention center. You know how food, uh, you know how expensive food is at a right, convention center? Right, I was about center? to say that they at least provide you food, but no, they did not, okay. No, the food that the food that is served there, you actually have to buy uh, near like food trucks or vendors, and it is quite expensive. So what do we do? We go over to McDonald's. Well, little did we know that there would be a long line of broke ACN reps standing there waiting to buy food. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. There is a McDonald's employee who sees that we're dressed business professional, we're wearing our little name tags, and he just flips out. He raises his voice and says, you guys are part of a pyramid scheme. You think you're going to make money, but you're Oh not. my gosh! Yeah. That yeah. would be me. I would be the McDonald's employee. <laughs> <laughs> that is so well, funny. The, the vast majority of us are just kind of standing there looking at him like he's crazy. Now, there is, there's this one, there's this one uh, short Latina woman who's from the East Coast. She had like this New York voice and she was saying, she said, listen, you know, we're going to be financially independent while you're going to be working at McDonald's the rest of your life. We don't need people like you in ACN. And he, you know, I can guarantee that they are making more at McDonald's than they would have made in this company. <laughs> of course, but when you're brainwashed, you, you're in such denial that <laughs> I know, you I don't know. even consider that. Well, it was the altercation was a bit much, but it was it, 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 at least I was being entertained because you know you're on the East Coast, you're with some right. outspoken people that you know are unfiltered. So right. I kind of took that in. Um, <laughs> but you know, looking back, that McDonald's employee had more common sense than the rest of us right. Right sheep standing in line. Right, right. But like, you know, you were brainwashed. That's what they do. All of these reps are brainwashed because they do use the same exact tactics as cults. And there's like, and I say this all the time, but there's no way that um, I would ever be convinced that an MLM is, isn't a cult because it 100% is, definitely is. Well, but wait till you get to the second day. The second day is actually even more confusing and exciting <laughs> wow. at the same time. So we had to be dressed up in our, our outfits. Like we were, our uh, team was called the system. It's, you have many uh, sub cults inside the giant cult. Oh so ours was called the system. And we had to wear these white button down collar shirts. Wow black wow. slacks and bright red ties see they, they're even controlling what you're wearing so yeah <laughs> <sighs> there was also a couple of other mini cults there you had two regional vice presidents who were star wars fans and so you have you have a bunch of their team members they're wearing jedi and sith costumes carrying lightsabers that are you know, that you're light kidding up and, me no oh like you're kidding me right now no wow wow 
So they're holding up these lightsabers uh, in, in the big auditorium and they're cheering. And I'm looking at them confused and I'm, I'm asking myself, is this Comic-Con? Right? <laughs> If you like, you think things cannot get any stranger, but wow, that's wow. Yeah, yeah. They're they even have props. Fun. They have props. Like they have props. Yes. Wow. And they're in costume. Now their teams were called Team Empire and Team Rebel Alliance. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughing>. gosh. <laughs> I'm thinking, what did I get myself into? Oh gosh. Yeah, it's not uncommon because like I know someone personally that is in an MLM and she like the people in her downline, like she's named her team. So yeah. Well, and then there was like one other team that had a name. Now these particular team members they wore black button down collar shirts, black slacks and bright yellow ties. Oh I don't know what the name of their team was, but wow. they chanted in unison the name of their leader, which wow. is similar to a Nazi salute. What? It, this yeah, is they, a straight deck cult, such a cult, cult. Like, wow, wow. That's my, wow. <laughs> Man, it's not funny, but like, wow. <laughs> I am stunned. I'm asking myself, what did I, what did I just get into? I, I didn't ask for any of this. Yeah, you're like, what the hell did I get myself into? Like, I gave this one last shot. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. So there were more there were more speeches and there was more pop music and people were dancing and they were holding up these uh, little uh, mylar bag balloons uh, that you just you hold in your hands and then you raise them above your head and you just kind of clap them together and what it was the hell it was weird but it was also like this exciting party environment where yeah they're trying to get you all pumped up all pumped up yeah. and ready like. It's like an adrenaline thing. It is. And everybody's love bombing each other. It's crazy. And you think that everybody there is more successful than you and that you're just kind of new, not knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Like 99% so of people are feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. So we meet this uh, middle-aged couple from New York. They're kind of they kind of have, you know, this uh, biker thing, like uh, persona, the, the man had like this long gray beard uh, it was, uh, that was uh, braided. And so you just knew that this kind of individual was, uh, you know, rode, rode motorcycles. Well, I asked him, uh, you know, how successful they were, what, what level they're at. And he would, that kind of knocked him off his perch. He was uncomfortable and he said, we are not successful at all. We can't get anyone to sign up. We're here because we're trying to figure out what we can do to get this thing off the ground because it, whatever we're doing right now isn't working. And the moment he said that, I felt a lot better about myself. Yeah, like you're, you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, because oh, I couldn't get this off the ground either. I um, wonder if so, they are still with the company. I mean, like, I'm probably not, but I wonder like where they are at now, you know? Yeah. Well, they're probably anti-MLM, but they're just, you know, quiet about it like mm -hmm. a lot of people are because they're mm -hmm. ashamed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because this is 2006, uh, a lot of the people that were there at that time are now gone. They're not in it anymore. Right. Um, so the day of the main event comes and that's where the business magnate Donald Trump of the Trump organization comes to give a speech. And I'm a little pumped up because I want to hear what he has to say. And I want to ask him questions. Well, he gives, he gives a speech about, you know, love, you know, you got to love what you do. If you love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. And you know, all, all those speeches, you know, all that, all the thing about, you know, how to be successful. 
Well, you know, we're all we're all really into it because like, wow, we're hearing from the man that made tr that built Trump Tower, the Trump Casino, uh, all of that. So we're, we're thinking, man, we're hearing such wisdom here. And then then they get to the q and I'm thinking, well, I want to ask him questions. Well, there's a caveat here. Us low level representatives. We didn't get to ask him questions. Oh, I knew that was coming. Only the mm -hmm. top level regional vice presidents, senior vice presidents, and even uh, triple diamond uh, gold uh, ruby staff. <laughs> yeah. They're the ones that got to ask him the questions. And we were supposed to sit back in awe. We were supposed to just embrace how brilliant they were, take in their knowledge, and and then go out and be and, and get to where they where where they are, knowing full well that that really was not going to happen. It was, it was cognitive dissonance, is what it was. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, the time comes, and I I find that toward the end of that day, my. Upline's ex-girlfriend was kind of a, a bit frustrated because she was informed that her upline, who was a team coordinator, got bumped back down to executive team leader because she was life, you know, life happened. Uh, what I remember was is her, my my upline's ex-girlfriend upline was pregnant, was getting ready to go into labor, have a baby. And because of that, she wasn't working her business and so she got bumped down as a result and my upline's ex-girlfriend was having some doubts about the, the business and you know just was just kind of questioning like uh what happened how she got the, how she got, got them this far what she got herself into and that kind of started sowing doubts in myself as well because now i'm asking those questions right and you already it's, had doubts like prior so yeah exactly so this is just kind of the the snowball effect um we so the time comes where we we, we fly i fly home my upline picks me up and before before i even flew out there he informed me that he would get uh, sign people up underneath me you know build me a good customer base to start with so that way I, I'd have a little, uh, a little uh, cushion. Well, he picks me up and I tell him, I tell him like all the speeches, I tell him why like one of the, you know, the whole uh, working part to make your job, full time at your fortune. And then one of them said, you can read books on how to swim, but you're never gonna, you're never gonna learn how to swim until you jump in the water. So we're gonna jump in the water right here with ACF. Well, the moment I say that, he looks at me and says, we are going to spread the gospel of ACM to all who will listen. Oh. When no. did this become a this become a religion? Okay. Right, right. This is when I really knew I was in too far deep. So I shifted gears and I asked him, I said, so did you give me that uh, customer base? Did you sign people up underneath me? Uh, he looks at me and he just kind of scoffs and says, no, <laughs> of course I didn't. And I, I, and I told him that I said, look, I, I kept my part of the bargain. Why didn't you keep yours? He's like, well, it's not my responsibility to sign people up, Russ. It's yours. I'm not going to do your job for but you. But that's what he said he was going to do. Exactly. So that was the light bulb in my head. At that moment, I remembered the rejection from my friends, the being tr mistreated on the road trip, uh, dealing with that jerk of an original vice president. I wanted no part of this anymore. Right. I was done. So I called ACN headquarters. I 
ask them to uh, please remove me from the membership roles. I was no longer interested. I wanted to quit. I wanted nothing to do with this uh, cult whatsoever. Now, I was informed that in order to do that, there was a process. I had to write out a letter with my name and membership number in the top left hand corner, write down uh, why it is I wanted to quit and, uh, and then send it in the mail. And now I thought, that's ridiculous. What, what oh, I, said, I think I know why, <laughs> go ahead. I said, well, can I just send you an email with, with all that information and, and tell you? It's, it, it's a lot faster. I don't have to deal with, with, with all the BS. And they're like, no, you actually have to write us a letter, put your name in the top left-hand corner, your membership number, and just write us a letter about your experience in ACN, why you want to quit, why it's not for you, and then just put it in the mailbox and send it to us. We'll deactivate your membership once we get it. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? If that's, if that's what I have to do, I'll do it. Most people, when they quit, they just, they just let their accounts go inactive. They don't do anything. I felt like if I put myself in that particular position, I was still involved in the cult, even though I wasn't active and I wanted nothing to do with it. So if writing a snail mail letter and mailing it would get the, get the job done, I would. That's what I would do. So that's what you did. Exactly. And after I put that in the mailbox, I felt free. I felt like such a calm sense of relief. But at the same time, I was angry. I started beating myself up by questioning why I allowed myself to get sucked into this. Why I allowed myself to be deceived, to be mistreated, to, uh, to put myself in debt by being loaned money, which, was, which I now had to pay back. I spent a total of $869 on ACN itself. And that, and, the, and I'm adding the, the, the conference, the, the, the flight, everything, all of that for the business I, I put in. And it might sound cheap compared to what other former Huns have had to pay, but it was a lot of money to me at the time. And I never, ever wanted to put myself in that position ever again. I was done. Well, once I did that, my upline's ex-girlfriend and those above her, they turned their backs on me. My upline did not. And which was a rare occurrence because most Huns after they quit, everyone turns their backs on them. Their names are dragged through the mud. They're called failures. They say the reason you, uh, you quit is because you failed, you didn't work the system right. That happened to me too, but he stuck by me for uh, uh, almost a year. And I invited him to my Christmas party. Uh, I hung out with him a few times, but I made it very clear that I had no interest in, in rejoining ACM whatsoever. Plus I couldn't because the operator on the phone said that once I quit, I couldn't rejoin for a year. Well, that was fine with me because I knew I wasn't coming back. Right. Yeah, and um, it's, you know, you say only 800 and something dollars. Well, that's almost a thousand dollars and any money lost is unfortunate. Like, I, look, I lost like, let's see, I want to think about like, I mean, I really didn't lose that much money at all. It could have been a lot worse, of course, but it was like about 50 bucks and I guess still want my $50 back. <laughs> Well, I wanted my eight hundred sixty nine dollars pack. That's yeah, for, sure. That's for real. Yeah. Especially all of the stuff that you had to go through, like, uh, like everything, like all of this, and it. 
I have a theory. Maybe they wanted you to mail that letter in because if you talked badly about the company, they would have your address to send you a cease and desist, like a legal letter. Do you think maybe that had something to do with it? <laughs> Perhaps, but honestly, the way the high level reps were talking, they said people can badmouth us all they want. They're just, they're just failures, they're disgruntled. You don't want those negative people on your knife. So, so you, need, you need to disconnect yourselves from them. So, and so, yeah, I was, I was disconnected, but honestly, I, I was so pissed off. Now I, right. I didn't end up joining any other MLMs, but I did try to do this uh, direct mail thing. Oh uh, yeah. That didn't get off the ground because I didn't, I couldn't pay. I didn't have enough money for all the stamps. Right. And like I, I heard that's just a straight up pyramid scheme. Like it's illegal. It's not even a multi-level marketing company. It's um, it's just straight up illegal. Like there's no question to it. You don't even have to send anything in to like try to prove it. It's just a straight illegal pyramid scheme. I mean, if we're thinking of the same one, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yep. So I tried that and it didn't work. I ended up getting in more debt. And a former, a former coworker at that time also invited me to a, a meeting over at a hotel because he was involved in Legal Shield, oh, which gosh. at that time was, at the time it was called prepaid legal, but yeah. they since changed their name after the death of Travis Alexander by Jody Arias. Exactly. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. They actually met each other through that MLM. Yep. Yep. So... <laughs> I came to the I came to the meeting, but I, I knew I was not interested in joining. I didn't sign up for anything. But I came nonetheless, and they had this like one hundred thousand dollar ring earner give a, a speech, and he again I was put on the spot because I was new. I, they'd never seen me there before, and I pretty much stood up and told my entire horror story in ACN, and the the entire oh group. God. Of course. I, I, let me tell you, I was very outspoken about that. <laughs> what happened? Well, the, the, the people in the audience, they were stunned because <laughs> they've never experienced a horror story like that before. Yeah. And they may have experienced the, it, but never spoke on it. <laughs> exactly. So the, uh, the ring earner looked at me and he says, you know, I'm not going to badmouth AC and I'm not even going to badmouth that particular individual. He says, I'm sorry you experienced that. You don't deserve that. It, you know, that, that kind of behavior that, that they had toward you is intolerable. He says, I can't, yeah. he says, I'm going to be honest with you. You won't be treated that way here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now that did not convince me at all. Good. It shouldn't have. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I'm not making that mistake again. Right. But, but no, I, I was polite, but I told my coworker, I just said, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, years later, um, I ended up going on this, uh, this uh, date with uh, an actress that I worked with in a, in a play a couple of years earlier because I'm an actor. I've hey, done... I'm also in the film industry, so. Exactly. So, so we're, so we're, we, we've probably kind of worked with uh, some of the same people. That's pretty cool. Right. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, I found out that she was with Rodan and Fields. Oh, that is like one of my top hated. It, I mean, I hate them all, but yeah, I call them rodent and kills. Yeah. I cannot stand that company. I hate it so much. <laughs> so much Whew, well, okay <laughs> so we, she was <laughs> yeah so we meet over at a restaurant called Magiano's, which is an italian restaurant oh. and that's it's a little pricey just, i'm gonna be honest with you but you don't usually eat there wait like, here's the thing you eat there for two specific reasons it's either business related or you're in a very serious relationship and you're about to take it to the next level. Right. Those are the only <laughs> reasons you eat there. Well, I met her there and, you know, I gave her a hug. It was nice to see her because, you know, we were, we were good friends. And 
um, she uh, she was asking you know, like what kind of uh, plays I was doing, what kind of films I was in, uh, and you know I, I told her because I was uh, getting a lot of work at that time, and um, so you know she she pretty much just kind of uh, gives me kind of like a uh, an intro before you know pitching me, and mm -mm. she. <laughs> She informs me that the older I get, the less roles will be available to me. Well, I'm going to be very honest with you, and I think you know that very well. Huh. Um, for men, pr particularly, mm -hmm. the older we get, the better the roles are. Right. Yeah, okay. that's like not even necessarily true. So, I mean, it yeah. just depends on what they're looking for, what, what characters are in it. So... Yeah. So she was using that as part of a, a pitch. Yes. And I'm assuming you paid for the meal. Uh, no, we actually split the check. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. No, I, uh, and that's the thing is like when I go, when I go on dates, it's unless, you know, unless like I'm in a really serious relationship, sometimes, sometimes uh, the, I, I, I allow the woman to pay or oftentimes we just split the check because I'm not going to allow myself to be taken advantage of. Yeah, good. <laughs> Especially when you're being pitched a pyramid scheme. Exactly. Right. So well, go ahead. What did she say? So she was just like, hey, I'm with this company, you know, the older you get, the less roles you're going to get. I can't yeah. believe it. Wow. Yeah. So she informs me of like some regimens and some uh, facial creams that oh, uh, I could use to make myself look younger, more marketable to uh -huh. casting directors. She's not even yeah. an esthetician. She does not even have. Oh, that makes me so mad. She has no right to give skincare advice. That is absolutely ridiculous. But they all do it. Oh. Yeah. Well. I, I, I looked at her and I said, look, I, I, I like you, but I, you know, I don't know if this is for me. I said, if, if, if anything, I said, I'll have to think about this. I'm, this is a lot for me, for me to take in right now. So let me get back to you. I, I didn't get anything. Oh, so you never got back to her. Good, 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 good. Yeah. You don't want to use that trash on your face. No. no. <laughs> I mean, she even had some of the some of the stuff there to, to kind of use as. She did um, not bring it on the date. She brought samples she to the date. She did. No. What the hell? That's a story yeah. in and of itself, right there. <laughs> she really brought. Wow. 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 She's like, oh, let me just, here's my, you know, we're sitting at the table like, oh, and as a matter of fact, I brought some regimens. She's like, goes into her purse and like puts it all on the table with a whole like <laughs> set up. That's hilarious and sad and wow. That's funny. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> um, like a lot of things that you were saying with like your experience, I don't know if you know this or not, but I was sucked into Primerica, but mm -hmm. I never got my license. It was only for like a week. And I told them, I was like, this is a cult. So it was like, they had the same type of thing, like, um, loud, you know, like the loud music going, people at the front of the room talking about financial freedom. They were like the, the RVPs and the, you know, like, the, like all of that so like it sounded like so familiar but as soon as like I went I saw that happening I grabbed my purse and I left and after I became anti-MLM I went back and I searched through my email and I searched the name of the company and I found an email I sent and I was like give me my 70 something dollars back this is a cult all caps I was like, I do not want any part of your cult. And this is way before I even became anti-MLM. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, here's the thing, okay? With, with a lot of these uh, MLMs, like uh, Roberta was telling me that it, 
uh, a lot of it's it's mostly women that were in MLMs and right. they're usually in the product based MLMs where mm-hmm. as uh, a lot of the men were in the service based which is where I was in right so so service based like uh, ACN um, Legal Shield Primerica right you know th- those are service based ones and so you're going to see a lot a lot of guys there mm-hmm. thinking that they're all going to be financially independent and the way the way they it's pitched to a lot of the guys is you can you can be there for your family you can you know you could uh have an income where you can support your your family you don't even have to worry about uh, meeting deadlines at work you can just you know do this at your time your leisure but the main thing is is not only can you put food on the table for your family but you are providing your children a better life yeah that's yeah the thing that's so dangerous with um a few of these companies like herbalife being one of them and the other one is primerica is that they have like an office building so it looks like a legitimate business whenever it's not and you know like looking into it now which i didn't before is like Primerica, they they try to go to like city workers and all of these people like that to 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 get them like a, a life insurance plan. And I looked, and there was over there is over two hundred lawsuits against Primerica because they duped like um, retired teachers and firemen out of money because they went into insure these city workers so yeah it is it's, a mess yeah it, it is a mess and you know you can you can report this stuff to the to the ftc you can file lawsuits and the thing is i know i know the whole rulings where they say as long as there's a product it's not a pyramid scheme well you know That's what not true Mm-mm. yeah it is not true but yeah. Like, like I tell people, like there are companies who have been shut down and they have a product because when you focus more on the recruiting than the sale of the actual product, that's when it's an illegal pyramid scheme and it happens all the time. And it's really unfortunate that a lot of these companies have donated to, and I never, ever, ever get into politics, but this is the one time that I do have to talk about it with MLMs because like they have donated a lot of money to a campaign so they it gets overlooked that for them being a pyramid scheme and you know this is on both sides of things yep. where they can just pay people off so it goes so much deeper than what people think it goes so much deeper than selling a lipstick or a, a cell phone plan or whatever it's so much deeper than that it's scary well, and watching the documentary "Betting on Zero, where they're talking about yes. herbal life, mm-hmm. um, when I saw that they went into Latino communities right. where people were just barely even scraping by, Bye. yeah, and now they're in a financial hole they can't get out of, they had to hire a an attorney who could you know, take a percentage of pro, a pro bono percentage, mm-hmm. I was crushed. Yeah, it's awful. It's so, it's so sad. And I have, I, I've posted like snippets of videos about people saying they lost money. You know, they were prayed upon. And like, and, and people still want to go and get like a tea at this local shop because they think they're supporting a small business. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's disgusting. It, it's just absolutely horrible like you know that these this company has scammed so many people and I actually I did a YouTube video like I, I mainly do this podcast now but I did a YouTube video a while back and the Primerica one but the Herbalife one is my most hated someone said why do you have to mention the Latino community I'm like because the, they preyed upon the Latino community you know and it's yeah there's so many people I had I had like way more dislikes than likes on that, which I don't even care because it's still engagement. 
but you know the way that these people defend these companies even after seeing people saying crying i've lost thousands of dollars from this company you know and you know they should not be in operation today but because of money that all boils down to money and who they can pay off they still are yeah well what really irks me is they have these what they call nutrition clubs which right reality they're speakeasies mm. let's just get real here they're, yeah. they're prohibition era type speakeasies because they don't have they don't have a logo on they don't have anything is just you walk to the door you see like this this uh, green uh, type uh, paper uh, blocking the windows and everything so you think okay what the hell's going on yeah the it kind of looks like an there. undercover crack house or something yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and then and then you find that people are serving each other uh herbal life shakes but they're all but it's a members only type of club and mm -hmm. honestly that that rubs me the wrong way because mm -hmm. you got you know, you had FBI agents in the 20s going after speakeasies that were serving alcohol, and yet for some odd reason, mm -hmm. this particular uh, building that that is hosting the that is that is serving these shakes but doesn't have an actual uh, label or uh, you know logo yes. outside, yeah, anything. Okay, that makes it suspicious from the outside, mm -hmm. and. Not only that, there's also a bunch of uh, health inspections that they have to have. And if you're not, if you're not uh, putting yourself out to the public, well, then I'm sorry there, that there's also violations that you, you incur. And it's just looked over. And yeah. another thing is, I don't know if you heard, but recently, like someone wrote an article, um, I believe it was a study that was published where a 24 year old female um, died from consuming these Herbalife teas and Herbalife paid them to recant their article, to recant their study and take it down. And it's, it's just so, it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. And, you know, they have one on every freaking corner. And I live in the middle, like, we bought a place up in the middle of, like, well, I say the middle of nowhere. It's, like, 10 miles north of the interstate. So, to me, it's country. And they still, they have them all over where I am. <laughs> and people are still going. And they, they're serving children. Like, what the hell? Like, kids who don't even have any say in what's going into their body. Like they're relying on their parents to give them something that's, that's that won't hurt them. Yeah, no, that's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay at all. It's horrible. You know, and they, I went into two different places and asked for an ingredient list and both places did not have one. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's awful. But, you know, I just, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story because I have never in my life looked into this company in particular. And I'm glad you didn't lose even more money. But I do appreciate you being, you know, brave to tell your story because, man, that's a story. <laughs> for sure. Well, it's, it's a story that needs to be told because... absolutely. You know, if my my entire idea, my sorry, today, my entire goal of telling this story is is to not only not only reveal my experience, but I want others to be able to come tell their stories as well. And yeah. if anyone has ever had similar or worse experiences than mine, please don't be afraid to tell your story. I know you're afraid right. of uh, repercussions about people attacking you. Uh, you know, and then trying to pull out stuff that you might have you might have said, or you know, or any form of gaslighting or blackmail. Look, I'm not gaining anything from this. I am telling my story because I want to help people and I want to inspire others to do the same. Absolutely. I'm not. I have no personal grudge against ACN or the people in it. I have no desire to attack any of the current reps and in fact i would want people that are in it to 
know what they're getting into so that way they can at least decide for themselves but honestly i want them to, to stay away to stay far away from it because it is a cult yep. and this is what cults do to people mm -hmm. another thing is i want a lot of the uh a, a lot of the men who have been involved in mlm to even come out and tell their stories as well because yes. i love i love the women that tell their stories you know because it's it's inspiring but a lot of the guys just keep it to themselves they they I don't want to do. talk about it they they just want to forget it guys we got to come out we got to tell our stories too yes for sure for sure yeah and i appreciate it so much and the, the last question i have is your friend that told you this was a pyramid scheme do you still talk to him to this day ah uh, we're not as close as we once were. Uh -huh. um, we ended up being roommates a year later. Uh -huh. um, and then after that, you know, we just kind of went our own separate ways. Yeah, life got, happens. <laughs> yeah, life happens. He got married and he's he's now uh, living about half an hour away from me. His and, and his wife's a very good person. I've met her. She's such a sweetheart. But we're not as close as we once were. Mm. Uh, simply because you know life just kind of took us in different directions yeah i have people like that too like i still like them as people i'm just you know things happen and life happens but um did you ever go back to him and say you were right this is a pyramid scheme i did okay <laughs> um he was a little cross of me mm -hmm. uh Rather than rather than be a little more compassionate, he was he was more of a tough love kind of person. He says, uh -huh. "Yeah, I told you, you didn't listen to me. I didn't want you to have to experience anything. Mm -hmm. And here you are. You learned things the hard way. Your dad was right. You're a hard knocks kid, and now you're paying the price for this. But yeah, but you know, like, you're out. he probably doesn't understand the cult, the, the things that go behind it, and how they indoctrinate people. But if he were to see that, then you know, he was yeah. probably think differently. Well, I, at the time, you know, I was, I was a little upset when he said that, but I had to kind of let it roll off like water on a duck's back because what he was saying was right. I just wasn't in the, in the, the type of mindset to right. be able to uh, take that in. Exactly. And that's completely normal. It's common. So all right well unless there's anything else you want to say i just again um thank you so much for coming on and i definitely appreciate you speaking out and we do need more males to come forth well thank you jess it's mm -hmm. been a pleasure you and roberta both were very kind very welcoming i do appreciate your listening to my story and hopefully this resonates and inspires more people to come out. Yes. And for everyone, um, Roberta, she has the podcast Life After MLM. So everyone needs to check that out as well. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening to another episode. And we will be back on Monday.